it was a teacher who was explaining to their children that if they carried their cross and loved Jesus, that one day they would have a crown in heaven. And then she asked them, who do you think will have the biggest crown? And one little boy answered, the one with the biggest head. I thought of that little story when I read the gospel. James and John had kind of big heads, not physically, of course, but ego-wise. They wanted a place in the right and left hand of God in the kingdom. They were looking at earthly success. They were, um, they were looking for success in this world, and Jesus is saying, no, it's not in this world. And then he asked, can you drink the cup I'll drink and be baptized the way I'll be baptized? Of course, he was referring to his death on the cross. He would be nailed to the cross and crucified and die with two thieves <clears throat> hanging next to him. And he's saying, can you do that? But they didn't understand that part yet. But Jesus knew that they would ultimately give their lives for him. But they had to learn from Jesus how, the, how God wanted them to live. And then he goes on to say that the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And that's the, me the message for us in the gospel. We are called to serve, to serve God and to serve one another. And it's not always easy. Sometimes we just neglect. Sometimes we just don't even see the needs around us. But the gospel is calling us to look a little more closely, to be aware when someone is in need that we can help them. It's a story of a famous musician and unfortunately she started to lose her hearing and ultimately became totally deaf. She became angry and cynical and bitter. She isolated herself from her friends and she turned totally away from God. She rented a penthouse and she could see people down below sitting in a park often and she taught herself how to li read lips and got very good at it. And one day she saw a young man pray and he was asking God for something. And so she sent her butler down to provide the need that the man was praying for. Another time she saw a young woman who was praying for something and she did the same thing. And day by day she would ask her butler to go down and fill the needs of people that she saw who were talking about the needs they had. And sometimes she would look up cynically at God and say, oh, look, I'm playing God and I don't even believe in him. But ultimately, those acts of kindness brought her to believe in God. She started to realize that that's what God does. He looks at us when we're not aware and provides our needs. And she was doing just that. And she turned back to God. Whenever we do something for another, Jesus said we do it to him. And we need to keep that in mind always. Sometimes we can be irritated by people coming and asking us to help them. And we need to stop and be patient, put ourselves in their shoes. Maybe they need to be learned. Maybe they need to be taught some lessons. Who knows? But we need to help. There's a story of a monk who for years prayed that he might have a, a vision of God. And he prayed and prayed every day, but it never came. And finally, towards the end of his life, as he got older, one day, Jesus appeared to him. And he was just thrilled that he could actually see Christ right in his own cell in the monastery. But as he was just there contemplating Jesus, the monastery bell rang. And it was his turn to help the poor. Whenever they rang that bell, someone was outside the monastery door who needed food or clothing or something. And the monks took turns being in charge hour by hour to help them. He didn't want to leave the vision. He did not want to leave it. But then he started to think, if I don't, they're going to think that we monks don't have anything to help them and they do need things. So reluctantly, he got up and he went to help the poor at the door. An hour later, he came back to his cell and he was shocked to see the vision still there. And Jesus said to him, had you not gone to help the poor, I would have left. The monk was truly moved. Whatever you do to another, you do to Christ. Simple stories, but they give us something to think about. 
that the Lord needs us to help others. We're all called like the apostles to realize that ultimately our success in life will be eternal life in heaven. Our goal is to get to heaven. And along the way, we need to imitate Jesus in our lives. And if we do, we'll find ourselves in his kingdom. The second reading talked about going before the throne of grace, the throne of grace and seeking God's mercy. We find God's mercy there when we come to him for forgiveness. But then it says, and we come there to seek his help. We need his help, don't we? In time of temptation, in time of our own needs, we need to go to the throne of grace and ask God for help. And he will help us. We have to trust in him that he will help us. And so today we thank God for these words of scripture as we always do. And as we receive his body and blood, realize that he's still serving us from this altar, giving us his own body and blood as food for our journey. And he just asks us to leave this church today carrying that love out to those who are in need.